Hey everybody, it's Chris, it's Killer Arcade Games, and it's Monday again. Um, this is a sad Monday for me because I'm actually recording it on Sunday as usual, but I'm going to be playing San Francisco Rush the Rock, the arcade game I was supposed to be going to pick up on Friday for only $400. I couldn't believe the price, it was an unbelievable condition. It was actually a real Rush the Rock, it wasn't a conversion kit. So I'm quite devastated I missed out on it. Um, I probably missed it by a mile, if, if we're being honest. I messaged her on, on Wednesday the second time saying, hey, I'm serious, I really want this thing. Uh, what time can you meet me on Friday? I can be there Friday because the weather's been so bad that I haven't been able to go with any confidence and drive three hours to go buy an arcade game on a trailer that's gonna be out in the open elements. So, you know, it's been raining off and on here for like the last, feels like 24 months, but it's only probably been like most of summer. Finally, it's all over with. Friday was the last day that, uh, was the first day it hadn't rained in a long time, by the way. And so that was like, okay, I'm going to get it. And of course she never replied and I knew that was a problem. Then I looked back later to see if she even read it and she updated the listing to say sold. So I missed out, no big surprise because of course it was an unbelievable deal, a $400 San Francisco Rush the Rock sit down unit, excuse me, they don't make those stand up anyway as far as I ever saw, but a sit down that was working, everything worked on it in good condition, it looked really nice. It may have needed a little bit of a cleaning, but unbelievable otherwise. So I'm really sad I missed out on it. So I figured what better way to uh, deal with the Monday blues by just playing some some San Francisco Rush for you guys. By the way, this is on my Star Wars cabinet. You probably can tell. Uh, this is our modded Star Wars cabinet that's downstairs. It's not in my arcade upstairs, which I wish it was, but then again, it's cool it's down here because you guys don't know it, but this one has probably the longest amount of time actually used. Like, it's on the most of all my arcades because it's just down here. We can just turn it on while we're hanging out watching TV. Uh, sometimes Lady Cag's making dinner and I'm over here playing racing games and, and all that. But anyway, let's dive into it. I'm just gonna race through, I guess, all the tracks. Might as well. Let me scoot that out of the way. And if you see any uh, messes behind me, I apologize. I swear we're not messy people. But uh, Lady Cag, Christine, has been doing her annual clean out stuff and throw things away. And she does it at like a snail's pace. Hopefully she doesn't see this video. Um, she does it very slowly, which drives me insane. I'm someone who starts a project, and if it can be finished that day, I'm finishing it because I cannot stand messes and stuff being out of place. Like, I'm, I don't think I'm like OCD or anything. It's just like, if, if it can be done, let's get it done. I, I can't really relax when there's a mess hanging around, especially when it can be done. So that's always tough when I start like a mod on an arcade cabinet. I usually try and wait till everything is in and just try to do it all in one run if possible. Of course, that's not always possible, so it drives me a little nuts. Look at this guy. He almost ran into me there. I heard him explode behind me. So Rush is one of my two favorite, uh oh, hold on. Favorite, oh, you hit me. <laughs> favorite racing games, probably of all time. Rush, oh God, I'm just driving like a drunk here. Rush and Hydro Thunder are my favorites, I would just say with confidence. Um, I have Hydro Thunder already in the garage, which is great. Not so great that I can't really play it because it's hot. I thought about doing a gameplay Monday with that one, but it is, it's 88 degrees outside right now and it's gonna get probably well into the 90s today. I actually just got back from a bike ride. I've been trying to you know, take advantage of the no longer wet weather and get out and get some exercise again. And that was fun, but my God, I've showered and I still feel like I'm sweating. <laughs> just don't think I can get rid of it. So I'm not really sure why this game captured me so much. It's maybe it's catching the air. You know, I always loved the screeching of the tires and how it left like real burnout things behind on the streets. I just thought it was a cool game. This is an Atari game. Now you guys know I should pretty much just change the name of my channel to Midway Slut because I love anything and everything Midway for the most part, especially 90s Midway. But if you look at these Atari games from that time, it was essentially just Midway games. Um, the cabinets, you know, like Mace the Dark Age is a Midway, or an Atari game inside of a Midway cabinet. Uh-oh, I'm dead. That's all right, I'll go over this way. I think there's another little secret over here I found much later in life, actually. I'm going really slow because I'm going through the grass, but here it is. Uh-oh. No, don't crash. No! Oh, my God. See, this game, this game's a little frustrating. It just shoots you out where, where I was before, but I thought it was kind of interesting one day when I actually just found it out of nowhere. So, anyway. Uh, Atari made this, and if you even look at the hardware, like Atari pretty much seemed to use Midway hardware and everything, so 
I think during the time they worked close together, I haven't actually looked this up, and I'm sure somebody's screaming at their computer right now, but uh, I love this game. I've, you know, I love, Midway just knew how to make games, in my opinion. I know it's not for everybody. Some of you guys like the Japanese fighters and all that, but I've always been a huge American Midway fighting game fan. It's like the Michael Bay of video games. Um, that doesn't mean a bad thing, obviously. A lot of people hate Michael Bay, but, you know, he makes decent action movies, and Midway seems to focus, in my opinion, on just the fun of the game. They make the game really fun, over the top, and crazy. And something about this game captured me. I remember playing it at the local arcade as a kid, and I played the heck out of it. There was three tokens to play, too, so it was like, I gotta get my money's worth. And speaking of that, I'm gonna try to at least get to the loop over here, and, and uh, I know I did it on another video, so I'm not gonna make a big deal out of it, but I'll probably link it in the description. I, I'll show you guys a little trick where you can get a ton of extra play time. Now, it doesn't really work on Rush the Rock as well as it worked on the original Rush game. Wow, thank you for that. Um, but it works. Let's see if I can get through this tunnel. I, I used to do this every time when I was younger just because I think I wanted to, as a kid, show off and be like, I know where the secrets are and, and all that. But uh, really, it's, it's highly dangerous and, yep, and it doesn't really do much for your time, in my opinion. But still, it looks cool. You get to be like, oh, I'm blowing through this tunnel in the water. I'll go through this lower level this time. And by the way, if you're a big Rush fan, you're probably wondering why I'm only doing two laps. I always just set it up like that because three laps is great when you're paying to play, but when you're just casually playing, that's enough play time for me, especially on this cabinet. Usually I'm just quick in and out play times on this cabinet. And uh, yeah, I definitely, Oh, I just realized I can't do the, the trick. But anyway, you jump off this top level and get into that uh, second level up there. And I'll just try to do it next time. But anyway, but yeah, two laps is enough for me in most cases on this game. And now if I was paying to play it, like at an arcade, I'm going with, you better give me three laps at that point, unless it's just cheap. <laughs> so guys, my only hope about, you know, the only silver lining that could come, can, no way, look at that landing, man, that was perfect. The only silver lining that could come from me losing out on buying that $400 rush is there were two of them, by the way. Maybe, I'm hoping this, because we still went to Houston on Friday, um, and I actually have a kind of funny story about that, but we still went to Houston on Friday, and we, um, just because, I don't know, you know, the, I was off Friday, I was, I've been working like crazy, and I just wanted to get out and have some fun. I said, let's go to Cidercade, Houston on our day off so my wife was cool enough and said yeah let's do it and uh, my only hope is that maybe someone from that arcade picked it up and they're gonna put it in one of their arcades which is all I can hope for because that's a game I have not seen in an arcade in probably four or five years now easily I, I don't ever see that game anywhere I actually went to Austin one time to go to a barcade on like the middle of Party Street I went during the day like a, a boring old fella well I guess I'm going this way this time I went during the day, you know, I was like, come on, they, they show Rush in the pictures, they've got Rush, and I get there, they didn't have Rush. I don't know if the machines are breaking like crazy or if people are just, you know, buying them up as collectors and keeping them, which is weird because I don't hear people talk too much about this game. I thought I was alone in my love for it, but anyway. I'm hoping they bought it. I'm hoping that it'll show up in an arcade so I can at least get a chance to enjoy it. But speaking of Cidercade, by the way, I, I think I'm forgetting what the speed I need is here. This may be wrong. Oh my god. Anyway, I'll link to the video in the description. It shows the loop trick where you can keep doing this inf not well, I guess it's kind of infinite until you run out of time, but you get time as you loop. So, uh, speaking of Cidercade, Houston, I had a very nice surprise when I was there. I was walking through the aisles like, yeah, alright, they have H2 Overdrive, and it was really fun to get to play that without a trillion people there trying to play it. Uh-oh. You know that feeling like when you go to an arcade and it's the weekend and you're just like, I just want to play some games. Like, I know a lot of my audience are serious arcade gamers. Like, you're there to play the games. You're not there, as I always say, to take Instagram pictures with your cabinet and be like, oh, I like retro games, I'm so hip. But anyway, I, I'm like, I go there to play games and I never see serious gamers. There may be a few serious pinball guys, but I don't know enough about pinball to really notice. But Anyway, I walk down one of the aisles because I'm like, all right, there's got to be something here other than H2 Overdrive that really catches my eye. They have a ton of games, they have good games, but sometimes you know you get that like feeling of I could play these at home, you know, like I could play H2 Overdrive at home. I just don't get the 
the full experience. But anyway, I go down one aisle and I see this game with blue trim. And I was like, what the heck is that? And I got closer and it was Killer Instinct. They put a Killer Instinct in the arcade. They do have an MK4, by the way. Completely missed it the first time I was there and saw it when I was leaving. But uh, the MK4 they have sucks because it's running Revision 2 and you can't pull off any combos or anything. So anyway, I've, I play this Killer Instinct and this Killer Instinct was absolutely beautiful. Clearly whoever owned it before them must have restored it a little bit. There were a few gashes on the side art. It had blue trim added, which it was not stock as far as I know. I've, I've never seen a Killer Instinct when I was younger, when they were new in arcades with blue trim. It looks cool. I probably wouldn't go out of my way to put blue trim on, but if it already had it, I probably wouldn't take it off. But clearly someone had put some effort into it. It had new hap sticks and, oh God, new hap sticks and buttons and everything, which is amazing because as much as I love the Side Arcade in Austin, because they have a Killer Instinct 1 and 2 combo cabinet, um, the controls are kind of junk, like they, they need to be replaced. And uh, I know if I walked up to one of them, I, I've often joked, been like, I wanna go up to one of these guys and say, hey, I'll buy you guys a set of sticks from like uh, Tornado Terry. I'll, I'll even come put them in, like no, no problem. Just open it up and let me put them in, which I'm sure they would look at me like I was completely nuts. But anyway, so finding a Killer Instinct with amazing, clearly brand new controls, like there was still texture on the joysticks, by the way. Um, I was so excited for that, and the monitor looked really good. It was just a great cabinet. They had the volume jacked way up. One cave or caveat, whatever. The problem was the blood was turned off, and it was driving me kind of nuts. I don't know why it was turned off. I don't even know if they knew it was turned off. Maybe that's what kind of bothers me about these big arcades is like, especially when, they, when they're mainly for bars, like side arcade's great because they do take good care of their machines for the most part. I mean, they get beat to hell, so I can't knock them for that, but um, when a newer machine like that shows up and that tiny detail was overlooked, that makes me think whoever set up the machine for them or the tech who did it, no offense to you if you're watching by any chance, um, I would love, I love the work you guys do, I'd love to talk to you guys, but um, I just don't know how that gets overlooked. It's like, you know Killer Instinct, it did not not have blood, why is it turned off? Maybe there's a dip switch turned off and maybe it's not that easy to, to do in the menus, maybe they couldn't figure it out or they were just like, I'll deal with it later, maybe they just don't care but that little stuff drives me nuts about arcades. Like, please take a little time to just go through the menus and make sure everything's set correctly. And it just takes like two or three minutes max. You know, like that's another thing that's like, hey, you guys want to hire me for part-time work? Of course I can never work there. It's way too far away. But like hire me to come out for like a weekend or something or a couple days. And I'll gladly go through all of your games and make sure all the settings are as right as possible and make sure everything is like, right as far as the arcade stuff goes because it, it does drive me completely insane like tiny touches when you play the four player uh h2 overdrive cabinets i just did like a barrel roll right there i don't think i'm gonna survive this though oh whoa whoa what is happening hold on now i'm stuck in the ceiling let's ride this out all right doing donuts in the ceiling what in god's name is happening in this all right we're moving on anyway um Little touches like that, like like Hydro Thunder or H2 Overdrive. They have four machines there and some of them have almost no volume and some of them are like crazy loud. So it's like, obviously the sound works. There's nothing wrong with the sound card in the PC in the game or anything. So why didn't you just like match the volume across the board? Drives me nuts. Tiny things like that. I'm sure you guys can, what is happening? I'm sure you guys can relate, but I don't know where I was going. Oh, I know where I was going with this. So I never see any skilled players on games, especially Killer Instinct, because you know, you guys know, Killer Instinct is not the easiest game to learn. It's very hard to get back into, especially if you know, you're know you older now and you're like, I've lost all the moves. Unless you have a, like a burning desire to get back into that game, you're probably going to not be able to do it. So that's also why I made my videos on how to do certain combos and like the idea of doing the Saber Wolf tutorial. Uh, I'll link, I'll try to remember to link those in the description. but. They're all on the channel. Um, anyway, so when I do see somebody playing, they're typically just, they're basically rocking the entire cabinet with the joystick and smashing all the buttons. And probably why most of the joysticks and buttons are complete crap at these machines. They just have complete noobs on them or are just beating the hell out of the game. So anyway, I see a guy and he's going to town at it. Like he's really working that game over and he's kind of dancing around a little bit. So I was like, okay, this guy might know what's up. I hear him actually pulling off a little bit of a combo with Orchid. 
So I'm trying not to linger. I don't want this guy to think I'm like, hey, get off the game so I can play. I'm just observing at this point. And I'm not gonna play him because I knew I would just like completely knock him off the game, no problem. But um, I didn't want to trash his you know, dreams. I was just excited to see somebody playing it. And he was getting like, you know, a couple killer combos and all that. I walked away, came back later. He was still there. At this point, I'm like, all right, I kind of want to play now, but I'm interested to see what he's doing. So I kind of hang out a little more. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go walk around, find another game. I come back a third time and he's got his phone on the deck of the control panel. I'm like, is he watching a video while playing? And I look kind of over his shoulder from a distance. I'm like, wait a minute, that looks like my video. Sure enough, this dude's watching my uh, how to beat, or how, um, my Killer Instinct Orchid video on how to get the uh, 48 hit ultra with her. And he's watching it and trying to pull it off like as he's there. And I'm thinking, well, I'm really excited to see, because it's, it's so weird to see somebody watching my video, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if he has any idea who I am or if he just found it on Google. Uh, it sounds very conceited of me, by the way. Like, don't you know who I am? But, um, so I'm thinking like, now this is gonna be really, really weird if he knows who I am and he turns around and sees me standing there, he's gonna be like, oh, what? Uh, you know, it's just gonna be awkward. So, <laughs> he never turned around, but I actually was looking at the video like, I think that's my video. I'm almost a thousand percent sure, but let me, before I get way too conceited here, let me go ahead and look on my own YouTube and make sure it's my video. And sure enough, it was my Orchid video because he had it paused and I could see all the instructions I put on the screen and stuff. And I was like, oh man, that's my video. So it was really awkward. At that point, Lady Cag had come around. She's like, you got to talk to him. I was like, eh, that's weird. Uh, I'm not going to walk up and talk to this guy and be like, hey, look who I am. For one, he may not know who I am, which is very likely in my opinion. So, uh, so I'm like, well, I'm not going to say anything. It's too weird. Um, and then I kind of walk away for a little bit and she's like, you got to at least go tell him. I'm like, all right, whatever. Jesus, you know, this is the stuff my wife gets me into. I'm not, I'm someone who always, I, I have like low self-esteem, but in a positive way, I guess it's kind of like, ah, they don't want to talk to me. Why would they want to talk to me? You know, I'm nobody. I'm just some dude on the internet playing video games. I'm not Tom Cruise. So she's like, just go tell him, you know, I was like, okay. So I kind of stand there and he sees me after he finishes a match. And I'm like, hey, you, you were just watching my video. And he's like, what? Oh, really? And he gives me the fist bump. And other than that, he has no idea who I am. So I was like, okay, this is completely awkward. But uh, at least I, uh, I'm assuming he has no idea who I am, but <laughs> he must've just Googled and it came up, like how to play Killer Instinct and it came up. So it was awkward for me, but still pretty cool to see like, hey, somebody's watching my video while I'm walking by them. That is kind of like a benchmark moment for the channel, in my opinion, because it's like, oh God, somebody, I know people watch my videos, I know that, but um, I've always had the feeling of like, maybe I'll go to someone's house while working, and they'll be working on an arcade one up, and then they'll be like, hey, how'd you make that? And be like, oh, I got this video. I'll be like, ah, oh, that's my video. Never happened. Only see, I've only ever seen one arcade one up in any house I go to. And I go to quite a few houses a week, so it's kind of funny that I don't ever see any, but. So anyway, I at least got to see somebody watching my video. Even if he didn't, he's not a subscriber probably, and he probably doesn't care at all. He was just Googling, but still pretty cool. And uh, not listening to my wife anymore. If I see you guys watching my video out in public by any weird chance, I don't know when that'll ever happen again. That was a completely random, like what are the odds I was nearby when someone's watching my video and I'm in a different city anyway, but uh, completely random stuff. But I'm never going up to you guys again if I see that. So. You better be looking around. If, if you're out in public in an arcade watching my video, look around. I might be there just hanging around just because I'm like, uh, I guess I'm like the Bloody Mary thing. Like say my name three times, killer arcade games at an arcade and I might appear with how many I've been visiting lately. All right, so this is the Alcatraz level. I like this level a bunch. They actually moved it over to the Rush 2049 game, which is really good on there, but I can't really figure out why they put big patches of dirt. So it slows you down as you're going really fast. It just slows you down. It's like, what's the point? I know they want you to take the, the loop that goes up and over, but still it's like, you kind of get there at the same time. So maybe it's just to even the playing field out a little bit, but it's really weird. All right. Well guys, no more complaining about the weather, I guess. I got to stop complaining in general. <laughs> I probably sound like the biggest crybaby lately. Like it's too wet outside and it's not warm enough, but I got to take Thursday and Friday off. By some miracle, my jet ski or my wife's jet ski was finally almost, it's like 99.9% .9 fixed. Um, sorry, I did hit my laptop to keep it awake. It's like 99.9% .9 fixed now and everything's 
working. There's just one sticker that's missing, and that's fine. They're gonna order it, she's gonna put it on, and we're done with dealing with the jet ski repair. I did the oil, I changed the spark plugs, everything's smooth, so I was like, thank God, it all lined up. The rain chances were there on Thursday. I was like, come on, it was supposed to be good. I was, took the time off to go out and have a good time, and uh, finally, I woke up that morning and all of a sudden the rain chance disappeared. I was like, oh, we are going. And we went out, we jet skied for probably like three and a half hours. We got on an island in the middle of the lake just for fun and hung out for a little bit. Uh, we don't drink much. I mean, I definitely don't. My wife drinks more than I do. Um, but she had a little, you know, it was like a seltzer, it was nothing. But, you know, she broke one out on the shore there and we hung out and listened to music. It's really cool to be able to go to an island in the middle of the lake because even if though it's a weekday, the lake has been packed. So I'm trying to have fun out there and like, get the hell away from me, everybody. I, no offense. If you guys ever see me in public and want to say hi, that's perfectly fine, by the way. Um, I don't like people in general though. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm very much a loner. It's not that I don't like you. It's just, I like, to, I like to do my own thing. And my wife's not one of those people, by the way, so it's tough. But we also don't like being around people on the lake anymore after her accident. You know, like she gets hit by somebody and she's like, no way stay away from me so well, it was nice to be able to get away from everybody and have our own little hangout i think one other boat pulled up in the area and they anchored nearby and then walked up you know swam up to the island but no big deal one person two people whatever so it was really nice and then a storm rolled in by the way it was like a 15 percent chance of rain and then all of a sudden we're out on the water and we're like that doesn't look good that looks like a pretty nasty cloud and she checked the radar and it was like storm it was like the finale to the stormy weather we've been having. It was just like massive line of storms coming up from the south. We're like, oh crap. So, uh oh, man, this level's kind of tough. Um, so we try to get off the lake quickly because anytime it starts to storm, people don't plan ahead and all of a sudden the boat ramp is packed and you're sitting there while it's pouring and lightning around you and stuff and just dangerous. So we headed for the boat ramp. We were already done anyway and got in the truck. By the time we got the jet skis on the trailer, and I was pulling away, it started absolutely pouring. So timing was okay. The worst part was the jet skis got filthy. Once again, as I mentioned earlier, I don't like things being messy or out of, out of sorts. So we just washed them quickly in the driveway when we got home because it had stopped raining by then. But uh, good day overall, thankfully. I've been looking for a good day for a while now. And then, of course, didn't get to go by the arcade, but you know, Friday was like, hey, let's go to the arcade. So we spent the day in Houston probably about two and a half hours at Cidercade, played a bunch of games. And then we went and, you know, just messed around in Houston for a bit and came home. So that was nice. And then yesterday, I don't know why I'm telling you guys my whole days, but hopefully it's uh, somewhat entertaining. Uh, <laughs> yesterday was Saturday, of course, for, for me. And um, did a little bike ride. That was fun. I don't think, I don't think I mentioned, maybe I did mention, yeah, the poop. That's right. The week before, I think I mentioned it on the live stream, so if you missed it, I apologize. But I rode through somebody's disgusting poop on the middle of the trail, and uh, that kind of ruined the day. So no poop on the trail on Saturday, which was great. Came home, relaxed a little bit, and uh, the wife wanted to go skating, of all things. I haven't been to a roller skating place in forever, and I realized how 90s I am deep down, apparently, because I did not think about it, but I can't skate in regular skates. Oh, there's one of those time boxes. I just picked it up. I cannot skate in four wheel skates, like the, the platform style. I have to have inline skates. So I was like, well, you better pick a place that I can rent rollerblades in because I'm going full 90s, babe. And um, we did, and we get there. We got there at like nine o'clock because she's like, that's when the glow, states, glow skate starts. Let's do that. And the guy's like, you know we close in an hour, right? We're like, oh, apparently they changed their hours and uh, she didn't see that. You know, I, COVID has just like ruined going anywhere lately because Nobody's working apparently, and no place can stay open late. Every time we try to go somewhere later, it's like, no, we're closed. And it's always a place that's always been open, you know, like a fast food place. Like, no, there's no employees. There's no way we can stay open this late. Like, good Lord, but, oh, that was terrible. So she was disappointed, but we hit more arcades. I, I know, we're starting to turn into weird arcade rats, I guess. And I hit one that I used to go to, where I used to play this game, actually, when I was a kid. There's one location left, and... They still run on tokens of all things, and you can't even, you can't use a card there at all. You have to go use the ATM. How was that my best time? That was insane. Such a good song, by the way. Can't use anything, uh, any cards. You have to use the ATM in there and then use the cash. And I was like, ugh. 
I actually found a couple free games, which I have great luck doing that. Like I walk up to it and if you walk around enough in an arcade that makes you pay still, just look, you're gonna find free games where people messed up and swiped their card too many times. Or, you know, I used to see this a lot when I worked in arcades, parents would give their kids tons of tokens and send them off. Like, get the heck out of here. We don't wanna deal with you. And sure enough, they're young, so they're just dropping them in. They're like, this is fun alone. So I found a Carnival machine that actually had the original shotguns, by the way, with the pump action. And I just played that for like 15 minutes. It had several credits in it and nobody was around. So played Carnival, um, looked around. They had a Showtime, NBA Showtime Blitz cabinet, but I gotta say, I like the free play model better. Not that I'll not go somewhere that makes you pay per play if it's really good, but something about that free play model just feels good. Like you don't, you get in, you pay, you pay your fee to get in, and after that, it's just you do what you want, play whatever you want, try a game even if you don't think you'll like it, and that's a kind of a cool feeling. I like that. So if, if we, um, my wife and I have been dreaming of starting our own arcade here, but if we ever start our own arcade, we've decided it's going to be on the free play model just because it makes more sense. But then after that, we were like trying to find maybe some bowling, something to do. I felt so bad. She had like gotten all done up and did her makeup and was like, Oh, let's go hang out. She was so excited and our, our friends were like, we don't want to go. So I was like, whatever. So I didn't want her to be disappointed. So we still went and everything. Wow. That was close. Come on, land it. Come on. Anyway, we still went and then we tried to find bowling. But by that point at the night, a lot of places were closing early still. And then you have to reserve the lanes, which I haven't been bowling in forever, but I like bowling. So it's like, let's do that. But we couldn't find anywhere to bowl that wasn't already reserved. So. We went to the local theater slash gigantic kitty casino arcade. She had a card that she, you know, had some money on where she took our friend's kids like over a year ago to go play some games one day on a whim. I was like, hey, I wanna go, but I was working. But anyway, um, so we played a few of the kitty casino games, which those are like, I don't know what to think of those. And what I mean by kitty casino is gigantic arcade machines that are redemption games. Wow, I'm still in first that's a bad landing though yep and they're fun but you just know you're getting screwed when you play them it's like this is a game of chance at best that's the ones i look for like where it drops a ball and if it lands in the hole because at least i know that it's not programmed to screw me over but you know sometimes they still get tricky on those things and we found a few of those we actually won like 400 tickets off just like two plays which was cool but then again, we walked into the area where you pick your prize. I'm like, what am I going to do with this junk? <laughs> like, I already, I've seen behind the curtain one too many times after working at the arcades that I have that are like, this crap is straight out of China. It's all just garbage they couldn't sell over there and uh, really cheap, nasty stuff. You're like, this feels dirty. I hope I'm going the right way. Uh, I think I am. Anyway, just feels like you're getting, you know, some weird disease from playing with this stuff, so... Personally, I don't care at all about the prizes. I'm sure a lot of you guys feel the same way because it's just whatever. It is what it is, you know. Cheap toys that you paid $40 for. But it's been a decent time off, thankfully. I really needed a little time off. I know you guys can probably relate. Um, had a rough couple of weeks at work and we've been busy, so hopefully everything will level out. But no matter how much time you get off work, you're always like, I don't, I don't really want to go back. I'm good. It's kind of funny how that works. And then it makes me wonder if we do open an arcade, which is, you know, that's years and years away, unfortunately. But if we open an arcade, um, am I going to hate being there all the time? You know, like, I really like the job I, I do now, which is, you know, going to be my business anyway. But mainly because I get to make my schedule. It's like, if I don't want to work late Wednesday, want to go out to the lake or something, I just won't schedule anything that time. And I may not make money during that time, but who cares? I'll, ha I'll be happy. That's what I am ultimately going for in life. I know some people who just work all the time and they don't look happy and I don't want to be that person. So I'd like to find a balance. I don't want to be a bum, you know, be some lazy guy. That was very rocky of me, by the way. I don't want to be a bum, but um, come on right here at the finish line. Get through there. Go. Okay. I don't want to be lazy or anything, but I would like to uh, have a good work life balance. But then again, if I'm working in an arcade that I own and everything is mine, sure it'll get old at some points. How was that my second best time? I don't play these tracks very much. I'm sure it'll get old at some points and it'll be, you know, stressful, you know. But then again, it's like I'm just sitting in an arcade. I don't necessarily have to be there to make it run. You know, I can hire some people to watch it 
then again, I'm sure any of you business owners know like myself, who's kind of a business owner, that you gotta be there, you gotta make sure everyone's doing everything properly, because people are, people are lazy. You, you look the other way, they're gonna be taking advantage of you, pretty much. All right, final track. This has gone on way longer than I expected, by the way. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. I've been rambling on about whatever. But I look at these Gameplay Mondays as part rambling podcast, part gameplay. So I, it seems that you guys are enjoying them. I appreciate that. This is kind of a cool track because it has huge straightaways like this. And you can get pretty much the top speed as long as you have a bunch of drones knocking into you. I guess I could have turned them off. But uh, I used to know some decent tricks on this level. And when I say tricks, I mean just paths to take and secrets and all that. This, oh, I did not mean to go off the road. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can nail it where you can cut off a huge part of the track. And it's like, I guess it's designed that way. And I found it as a kid, you know, it's, this game seemed to click with me is how I should say why I love it so much. It just feels like I knew what to do. You know, usually if you skip a huge chunk of a racetrack, they're gonna make you be like, no, you need to go back and get to the checkpoint. But see, I just skipped over the entire track. Now I'm in first place from eighth to first, fra first place. I think I just missed a secret off to the left there, but we'll see. One day I'm going to buy this cabinet. I mean, I'm always actively looking every single day. Uh, big thanks to Mark. I don't want to say your last name because I don't know if you want to be outed. I don't know your, uh, I don't even know if you, your username on YouTube, but I'm assuming that's how you know who I am. So that must be how you know I like Rush too. But. Thank you, Mark. He sent me an email and alerted me to it. I look every day. I looked the night before. I look like five times a day, probably, on Facebook Marketplace. I looked the night before. It wasn't there. So when he sent it, I was like, oh, this must have been posted overnight. But no, it was 19 hours ago, and it was the next morning. So I don't know how it didn't show it to me. Right now, the only one I see for sale is in Kansas. And my God, I'm not driving to Kansas, and I'm not going to pay $9.50 for not even a Rush the Rock cabinet. And I know you can get like the home upgrade kits where you can just, you know, put a couple ROMs on the board and yeah, I broke that. You can do your own upgrade at home, change the hard drive out and all that. But I'm, I don't really want to do that if I don't have to. And I'd like the cabinet to say Rush the Rock. So I'm going to keep looking. Now, if I find a regular Rush at 400, I'll probably buy it just because it's, you know, got to have that. Oh, I'm going off. Yep. And I'm dead. So I'm not going to do it on here. But down that hill, if you go down that hill when you're at the very top up there, go down to the right, there's an opening that gets you into Pappy Land is what it's called. And Pappy Land is like this huge, almost like a, it's like a skate park for cars. It's crazy down there. The biggest problem is on the arcade, you don't get enough time to enjoy it. You get down there, you get maybe 20 seconds. That's if you don't crash or anything and get pulled out of there anyway. But you get like 20 seconds and it's over, but it's basically the course that was in the console versions that you can do with an uh, unlimited time. And I played the heck out of the console version of this because MAME wasn't a thing, and of course I didn't, yeah, it was dead. I wasn't gonna be able to own a real arcade at that age, of course. It was always the dream though. It was always like, you know, you watch people on TV be like, they have an arcade in their house, or you know, some people, I, I knew a kid who had a pinball machine, but it was very old, but it was still like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. How do you have a pinball machine in your house? Like, well, my dad bought it and he doesn't want it or whatever. It's like, so we played pinball old, I can't even remember the name of it, old pinball nonstop for probably, I don't know, we probably did that for a week. Like, I'd just be like, I'm going over to Grant's house and we're going to play pinball forever. <laughs> It's funny the stuff that would keep you busy when you were younger. Now kids have so much stuff, so many game consoles that are just, you know, way better than anything you get in modern day arcades and it's pretty crazy. Now I'm that old guy talking about these kids these days. They don't know how good they have it, I tell you. Come on. The problem with Rush on MAME, by the way, is it seems to always pull to the left a little bit, the steering, and I can't, it doesn't seem to be any way to fix it calibration wise, but either way, it's fine. It's a slight pull to the left. Maybe it needs an alignment. You never know. Uh, maybe the tires are a little uh, unbalanced. <laughs> Listen to me trying to sound like I know what I'm talking about here. I didn't break the glass. I have blown up more times recording this than ever, probably. Oh, that guy's dead. I don't even know where he went. No, oh, there he is. 
Okay, let's see if I can stay on this Baja run right here with the dirt. Okay. Probably gonna get my name in on this one because I've played this track very few times where I've actually tried hard to get a good, good run. It's funny, I want Rush the Rock badly, but really I don't play track four, five, and six hardly at all. Wait, track five, six, and seven. I mean, I love the first three and then Rush the Rock, but still, I gotta have the best version of the game. Rush the Rock's the best version of the game, if you ask me. All right, guys, well, that's all for this one. Sorry it went so long. Hopefully you found it enjoyable. Hopefully you made it this long. Um, if you were the guy at Cidercade who I awkwardly told you you were watching my video, leave me a comment, let me know. I doubt you're gonna be that guy though, because he was like a dad, it looked like. He was probably not very into, not that you guys may not be dads, but he just had that look like, I'm just here to play some games with my kids and I found one that I can't believe is still around. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have the good rest of your Monday, or good rest of your Monday, uh, rest of your week. I'm gonna try to get you guys a video this week, but we'll see. Uh, MAME is very glitchy with this game, as you can see it freaks out a little bit like that, but still it's, it's great to have at home. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more arcade content. I do gameplay stuff on Mondays, that's what this is, or I try to keep it up. Wednesday or Thursday I try to release a regular video. I'm going to be getting back into arcade 1-up stuff. I've already released the arcade 1-up marquee video. Terminator 2 was announced, I didn't even talk about this. It wasn't announced, it was leaked. Um, so check out my channel if you don't know about that. Terminator 2 Arcade 1-Up seems to be coming out. It's the video before this one if you want to see it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be upgrading my Killer Instinct Arcade 1-Up mod soon. I can't wait. I think I've picked all the art and I'm just about to order all of it. So it may take like another month for it to arrive. Some of it's coming from, I think, uh, what is it, Sweden? I don't know, somewhere on way on the other side of the world and some of it's coming from America. I'm getting like pieces of art from all over the place. All right, guys. Leave me a comment, let me know how your Monday's going, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.